All right, we think we're back. We went ahead and jumped off the Wi-Fi. We're just gonna try to stream straight up and hopefully that this is a little better for all of you out there and who are watching. Again, this is part two uh, of our interview with Deb Sherrill. For those of you who are just joining in, Deb's gonna share out to, to her group. Remember, this is a live stream and it's an interactive um, creative channel. So shoot up your questions and your comments. Deb was talking about her childhood, her education in nursing, her, uh, her draw towards painting and all things creative. And then following you found that there was a special interest in the chemistry of art and specifically with paint pouring. And so we're, we're kind of tuning back in as folks are, are joining back up. Um, remember, if you haven't seen, Deb is giving away two wonderful pieces of artwork for everybody who shares this. And she's uh, providing this framed work. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Framed work. And then also this pour from last night, right? Right. The Ohio. Ohio and home. The Ohio and home. And uh, there's a little heart here, you can't see it, which is Medina, right? Or is this? It's whatever you want it to be. It's whatever you want it to be. It could be North Royalton for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be Columbus. It cannot be Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, share out. So, we're, we're just going to hand it right back to you, okay. Deb. And uh, so, so, talk a little bit more about pouring. And what's, so, what's the best way to explain to somebody who might be familiar with it? may have never heard of it, might understand the chemistry. So take us to like elementary okay. introduction. If you've ever had a can of paint that you're, you know, you're painting the wall at your house and you've spilled it, and you just spilled a can of latex or acrylic paint, which is simply liquefied plastic, all right? And it's made to dry at a certain rate and that's how that works, but if you take that same liquid acrylic paint and you put some chemistry in it, and the chemistry would be Floetrol. I don't own stock in this company, but whatever. It's a paint conditioner for latex slash acrylic paint. Commercial painters use it to make the paint lay down flat so you don't see all the brush marks and it makes it dry slower. The other thing, the base for the whole thing is polyvinyl acetate, simply glue. You can use the clear kind, you can use anything that says on the back that it's polyvinyl acetate. Elmer's glue, I buy it by the large version. Then the other thing that I use to make the paint pour is Liquitex pouring medium. If I were making 10 ounces of this chemistry, it's 10 ounces of Elmer's glue, two ounces of Floetrol that's been strained because there's like boogers in it, and one ounce of the pouring medium. You don't have to use this version. There's now a billion of them on the market. You can also buy the uh, paint pouring products that are already pre-prepared like I take them to my to my class experiences. I've put it all together here. I've done a couple of the classes where people wanted to make their own colors. I'm like, okay, we'll do that. So I bring a ton of colors and they have to mix it themselves. And then you see the smiles fall right off their faces because it's like, oof, this is a lot of mixing. And it's gotta be a very specific consistency. And when you do all that work, all of a sudden it doesn't feel as much, like as much fun. So I stopped doing it that way. And I ask people if they have special colors they'd like to use. That seems to go over a whole lot better. So acrylic paint pouring is just liquefied ac acrylic paint that when you, I'm gonna pour it on this test tile. Everybody in every one of the experiences that I do, everyone, every time, we start with a test tile. It, to me, it's like sending out good software. 
you, you test it first. We're gonna test to see if we like the colors. If you don't like the colors, because it's simply glass, you can wipe it all off with isopropyl alcohol. Everybody's happy, start again. But you don't end up with a, a bigger piece of stuff and a lot of wasted paint and you say, oh, I hate that. And then you're in tears. I've only had one person in one of my classes in tears. But there's always an escape route save. I save that only for people in tears. And I tell them that at the beginning of the class. So we use a test tile and we put a base coat down. A base coat simply is something that will hold the rest of the paint onto the, this is a substrate. Anything that you put the paint on is a substrate. You put it on fairly thick. If I were in a perfect world, I'd probably say put your gloves on, but I don't like to wear gloves. I wore gloves a lot of my life and I dislike them. And because this is so much Elmer's glue, you know the I Love Lucy version where things are sticking to her hand and then it's sticking to her head and it's sticking to ethyl and all that stuff? That's what happens. So we don't put our gloves on too soon. So then we just take some colors, colors that speak to you, and colors that will create a contrast. And put them down. Say you're in love with those colors. And then like last night's deal, it was, we called it an alcohol swipe. This is just one technique. I will grab the fire, which is right here. This is a heat gun. The kind of heat gun that would like burn your face off mm -hmm. or lift asphalt off of tile. We heat it because there's silicone in it. We also use silicone at the end, at the end before we pour it. You don't get it too close or you'll burn the paint and then you'll be dissatisfied with your product. So you're just heating up your paint. Heat it up. Then I tend to squirt some isopropyl alcohol. That, that causes the paint to become even more reactive. And you get everything that you care about out of the way. <laughs> and this is just happens to be a swipe. I'm going to take the colors and let them happen. And not to burn the house down, I'm Bring gonna it. heat it one more time. And I ask myself, do these colors speak to me? And you're working on this tile, and if you find out that this is, these are the colors you like, you just go straight to the larger? Yes. So you've got them ready, you've got kind of the chemistry, you've got the, and you, Move Correct. straight to the larger piece. There are certainly occasions where people will say, oh, I do not like that at all. What color do you suggest? And, and I tell them at the beginning also, I'm not going to pick the colors for you unless you ask me. Because I'm telling you, the toughest part of the class, and if I let it, it could go 25 to 30 minutes, people trying to figure out what colors to use. So I put a timer on it and tell them, if you can't figure out what colors you want, you know, we use a color wheel and talk about complementary colors and stuff. Uh, if they can't pick, then I'll say, maybe you need some help. And then I usually have three training assistants with me there, mm -hmm. and they're all experienced pourers, and they'll, they'll help them. But once they've picked, they're usually pretty committed. So, for instance, this was, these were colors that we used for pumpkins oh, and cool. Thanksgiving gathering uh, paintings as was this one. Uh, this happens to be one of the techniques we use which is called chameleon cells. They are so cool. That's using excess silicone. Silicone opposes the acrylic paint and so those those markings that look like alligator belly are simply silicone opposing the acrylic paint. Gotcha. And this is a different version. Uh, this We were doing Christmas trees as you can tell and instead of putting the paint on the test tile, we put the paint on a flat surface and just did a dip. The thing about 
acrylic paint and the chemistry that goes in it, it loves disruption. So when you can disrupt the surface, you'll see this is changing as we speak. The surface will change for probably the next 12 hours. And it'll change more than you're gonna like it to if you don't keep it on the level surface because <laughs> the paint will run off, it's flowing, and it will not be dry for about 48 to 72 hours. Mm. So that's why we had to create the idea of giving people a secure box to take their artwork home and so they didn't wreck their cars and that would kind of stay level. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, gonna put this back. Gotcha. So the process, I mean, as, as I'm taking a look at I already start to see these, you know, kind of this chemistry and is it the isopropyl alcohol that is creating kind of that cellular feel? The cell activity comes from the flow trawl. And what I didn't show you was the big box of how many ways can you do silicone. Um, there's all kinds of ways. You, you, I pre-added silicone just to speed up the process here today, mm -hmm. but... I mean, if you just wander around, how many ways can you say silicone? Hair oil by L'Oreal, my favorite. It doesn't say silicone on the back, but if one of the first three ingredients is dimethicone, boom, you want it. Um, three in one, silicone, fix your garage, fix your engine, fix the squeaky doors. Then there's of course the one you see a lot on the YouTubes for the treadmill. It's treadmill, it's straight 100% silicone. Or if you want to spend a lot of money and go to an art store and buy 100% straight silicone, that's probably the same thing that's in this one for $3. How many ways can you say silicone? But you do need silicone, okay? And you've pre-mixed it into the paint, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you didn't pre-mix it into the silicone. paint, oh, WD-40. <laughs> you could spray it on. I've seen people spraying it on, but uh, sometimes you get way too much silicone and then uh, you, your paint won't dry. It'll crack off. Hmm. In fact, let me grab you one of the paintings of a, this had way too much stuff on it. And it you want us to follow you? Um, you can. Let's follow, yeah, let's follow you. And so, talk us through a couple of these pieces here. Ones that maybe went bad. Oopsie. Perhaps ones that... This went bad. Oh. See the cracks? Do we mm -hmm. have enough lighting here? Mm -hmm. Or we can walk back this way under this light. Yeah. Too, this yeah. is way too much paint and it cracked up although I have another one sitting over here that's I keep all the fails because they're a lesson learned this was a way too much paint that didn't get time to dry so it dried on the top because it got too much fire from the gun and it dried from underneath up so it went Sahara Desert mm -hmm. <laughs> So I just, re I just poured on top of it again with gold, and the gold went into the cracks, and it spoke to me. Okay. So I kind of like it, but it's my, my sample of don't use your heat gun or a hair dryer to try to make the paint dry, because that won't work. Mm. We put too many things in it to make it dry slowly. Right, to slow it down. This is the very first one I ever did, and I usually take all the classes with me because... And the person who could probably appreciate this the most is my husband because I sat down here for months when I was waiting to have my hip replaced and I probably either sat here and cried or swore and did it again. And this was the first one that worked in my opinion. And so in the first 101 class that I do, we always use red, yellow, and blue because they are primary colors and I can almost guarantee success so people don't go to mud because they want to touch the paint so much. Touch, touch, touch with their fingers or the dipsticks or the you know mixing sticks. So these are just tiles from the very first classes that we did. Um, the cool thing about this and this, these are pictures from a young woman who didn't realize she was an artist. And this is part of a project that I do at the Recovery Center of Medina, um, the Art of Recovery. And people who are in some version of active recovery um, come and pour paint with me. And if they learn anything, they learn how to let this paint go. And I'm like, isn't this a lot like life? There's so many things we just have to let go and move on. And, you know, the typical traditional starting. And here's another young man uh, from the same group of people. He did phenomenal. And yeah, he was like, beautiful. I do not know how to do anything artistically. I'm like, but you do. 
look at your work. So um, I really enjoyed working with the crew there and almost makes me cry. <laughs> so they're a good group of people. Here's his test tile. He oh, thought he okay. liked, see, and they all go together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I see that. They don't have to commit to it, but they usually do. Um, these are dips instead of pouring paint on a, you know, a substrate, we dip it and it comes out kind of cool. And you know, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, so so just Craig, yeah, just kind of walk mm -hmm. down and show some of these. I some of these look like you've mixed some other things into the paint. Is am I seeing some? Are those? Uh, oh yeah, I embellish. Embellish. So, yeah, we have three levels of classes. The one hundred and one, you're going to do red, yellow, and blue, and mm -hmm. don't whine because if you want to come and mix your own paints, come to the one hundred and two class. Okay. And then after the 102 class, and I know that the people have the technological ways of doing it, mm -hmm. then they can, they can come to a third class and we'll pour the paint and then they'll embellish it. And so that's what this is down here, Craig. Just, um, you know, adding glitter, adding gold leaf. Uh, this is gold leaf, pieces of it. Some of them have liquid gold leaf in them and some of them have literally glitter in the product, you have to buy the glitter, glitter that's already in an acrylic base. You can't just add, you can add glitter, but it'll get covered by the acrylic paint, which is ends up being opaque and where'd the glitter go? It's yeah. gone. So, oh, this is, this is alligator belly. Um, this is that chameleon, lots of silicone technique that um, I kind of love. I had posted this on Facebook and uh, a man came back. I don't even know who this gentleman was. He says, well, that looks like al alligator belly skin to me. I'm like, okay, that's its name. <laughs> so, and these were some of my starting, trying to figure it out. Um, and the question was, what kind of substrate can you use? Can you use watercolor paper? Mm -hmm. No, you can't. Um, can you use anything that lets water go through it? Well, you can, but it's going to look like the devil when it's done. Yeah. Because yeah. it won't dry correctly. And then you'll say, hmm, that was so good for a minute. And this is, sometimes I do people's pets as memorials. And this was a test to do a memorial for my friend's dog, who was a Great Dane. Mm. Um, I ended up, for her picture, my Great Dane was a black silhouette. And, of course, we all cried. And she loved it. So... <laughs> So the, the, the chemistry, once you kind of figure out, I mean, do you recreate that same chemistry? Do you write down formulas or is it all by feel? Well, actually, I've been doing yeah. it long enough that I can whip up the formula real quick. It's 70%, you know, 70%, 20%, 5%, and then you end up with 100. And I'll have it on my website if people want to do it. This is not proprietary. It works every time. I will say one time it didn't work at one of our classes downtown because it was so doggone hot. And um, all my bottles of paint seemed to be warm and very highly liquid. So if they get too highly liquid, I mean literally the paint just falls off. And you need to have enough thickness consistency um, to try to prevent that. And we were, we were scurrying that night. I had not experienced that heat situation and then you throw in humidity this is a version of um two two kinds of pouring uh i love the idea of 90 degree angles for some reason with a full circle in the center two different pours melted together um, i didn't glue it down correctly so it's a fail but i dug it yeah. <laughs> so it, it feels to me because we've been together in uh, an artist way class, which I wanted to talk about as well. But it seems to me that you've got a special heart for teaching this, or to see folks maybe discover or rediscover themselves through pouring. Is that, is that, uh, that the correct that observation? That would be true, that would be true. And you know where I learned to love being able to share the actual process? Yeah is when I was in Idaho, 
I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I knew I was still, I worked for lawyers doing medical malpractice reviews. You can do that from the moon, but that doesn't include people and it's all very sad. So I was walking my dog one day and uh, a new neighbor that I, I was, I was the new neighbor. She said, well, Deb, what are you going to do with yourself? I'm like, you know, I think I'd like to teach art like piano teachers. She was a piano teacher and a fifth grade teacher. Like, like you teach piano to the kids. You only come to your house, you do art, everybody's happy. I'm like, I, I would use um, Drawing from the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. I would use that as my curriculum. And she said, huh, we don't have any art teachers, but we need art teachers. I'm like, okay. <laughs> we kept walking. The next week she comes back and she said, could you do the whole fifth grade? I'm like, hmm. How many kids would that be? 90. Three grades of 30 each. I'm like, well, I don't know that I can't, but let me tell you. I'm a nurse by training. I don't know anything about classroom control. She said, oh, that's okay. The real teacher will always be in the room with you. She will help you with crowd control. She will help you with techniques. We just need your brain and the art, the art world and come and have at it. You wanna do it? And because you, I had a bachelor's degree, you didn't need anything else to teach in the school. I'm like, but I'll only come as a volunteer. So I would go there during my lunch hours, three, one and a half hour episodes each week and do each class one and a half hours a week. And so now my theory is, anybody else that I teach, are you smart as a fifth grader? Fifth graders are my favorite. They are the age of reason, but they're not hormonal yet. Don't teach in sixth grade. <laughs> Only teach in fifth grade. <laughs> Cause that, oh yeah, that, that 12 months makes a big difference, right? Huge, how the kids changed from the minute you met, I met them in September till they were, we were done in May. It was like, wow, incredible. It was a phen phenomenal experience to me. And that was really the first time I had ever learned to teach art. It's a, and, and you caught the bug. Probably, I did, right? I did. So you, found yourself loving teaching, you find yourself um, uniquely <clears throat> created, um, observant to chemistry and art, you find yourself pouring paint, uh, what, what is, and you find yourself, as, as we talked in the very first part, which, which, we, uh, uh, which we mentioned in our first push here live, that you find yourself back here in Northeast Ohio. So fast forward decades of all these experiences to the last few years, and now you're teaching, you're pouring, um, you're doing all kinds of things. Um, but bring us up to kind of present time. Okay. Uh, in 1996, a lady wrote a book called The Artist's Way. I didn't find it until 2004 when I attended. It's a 12 week class, it's a 12 week chapter. Um, and I, I went to a community college, and it was here in this, this town, not this town of Medina, but towards the Akron area. And um, I'd like to say that perhaps that book changed a lot of my perception about myself and my abilities uh, as creativity goes, because the sideline or the sidebar of the name of that book is The Spiritual Path to Finding Your Creative to Recovering Your Higher Creativity. Recovering or Discovering. And so I've looked at that book every year since. It's kind of like the New Year's promise to me. And so recent, well, a year, almost a year ago now, um, once again, I knocked on someone's door and said, I think you need my services because I want to be a facilitator here for the artist way. And People looked at me like, <laughs> and um, I must have sold it because we started the first Artist Way class in January of 2019, which seems like more than that year ago. I mean, mm -hmm. now it's almost a year, but it seems so much long ago, or it could have been yesterday. So I've done that. Um, I usually can only emotionally handle one class at a time. I mean, I do know there are some people who facilitate, and, and literally it's just that. It's getting people together 
and just being a travel guide. And the people I meet have changed my life. And I hope the book, as well as me facilitating it to with them has helped change their lives, for only for the better. Um, it seems to me that the more creative a person is, the happier they are. And so that's what I've been doing lately. And these pouring classes and uh, trying to work out at the gym three times a week with a trainer who is ruthless, but good. <laughs> trying to get strong. And that, that seems to be your, your style, right? It is. Keep strong. Bring it on, Ruthless. So, back to the artist way, because that's how you and I met. Yes. And so, for folks who are like, well, how do you, how do you connect with? Yeah. Life changing. So, last, whatever it was, last fall, last winter, uh, December-ish on my Facebook, I find out there's an artist way. It's just, I don't remember how it was listed, but it was, it was a group that was going to meet, and... So a bunch of creative people that got together and encourage each other to move through this book and, and kind of discuss blocks and successes and um, there are a couple things that I still practice hmm. not daily but hmm. weekly uh, for certain and that is the process of they call morning pages I'm going to call it journaling because it doesn't mess in my case sometimes it, it has a a path. Sometimes it's just craziness. putting out yeah, craziness to put down words, and it's it's morning. So morning pages, and it's to write three pages each morning, probably as close to wake up as possible. Right. right? And, that is exactly right. Um, there's there's my current journal, and the back one to the left is my original journal, and it's from 2004. And so three pages a day. Is is that something that you do? I do. do often? I do. Why not? I mean, hell's bells, I'm retired. I have no excuses. I have to fit it all in. There's no excuse. But, well, what's your observation about that? Because I've got some observations about it, but <laughs> um, this is just writing, dumping yeah. words on a page. Free flow consciousness, hitting paper. There is definitely something that changes your brain, letting something come out of your head through your hand, through a pen or pencil. And she actually encourages you not to do it on a computer uh, in her prologue. Because that was written before we all had access to real life working internet. Um, so writing morning pages, I can tell you that from back in 2004, uh, I, would, I was going through a tough time of some nature and I, I, I was writing and I thought, gosh, this feels like a poem to me. I don't write poems. I don't. And so I put the book down and started doing something else. I was getting ready to go to work. And I went, okay, that poem won't go away. I ended up writing about a 15 stanza poem. I honestly felt that somebody else was writing it, but it was me and my experience. I'm like, huh, that is just over the top. I've never written another poem since, um, but I have written things that I otherwise wouldn't have, would not have recognized. I, I really believe that. I truly believe in the right brain, left brain topic of creativity. And if you want to hold that book up right there, the time, the science of creativity, it's there. It is absolutely a thing. It's so much of a thing that when I was teaching art to individual kids, besides the fifth graders at uh, the school where I was hanging out, if people wanted their child to, ha to come and do art with me, I only had one criteria as, as a port of entry. I didn't care what their age was. I didn't care whether they were ADHD or a Mensa. I don't care what your kid is. Can they write their name in cursive? What a showstopper that was. But I am telling you that if you can prove the, the brain connectivity to the manual ability and the muscle high eye hand coordination piece, then you've got a kid who can in fact learn art or be creative, whichever one's come whichever comes first. 
and that held up always. And if there were children who, because the schools don't teach cursive any longer, I'm like, okay, well then their first art classes will be learning how to do cursive. And if we can't get through that, we'll know that your child's brain and hand-eye coordination are not ready for art classes, at least with me. Yeah, yeah, right. So, the one, there's only two things that the artist way asks you to do, and that is morning pages, and that seems difficult for most people. And the other thing is to take yourself on an artist date each week. And I have done so many cool things that I otherwise never would have considered doing. So an artist date, quite simply, is? Taking yourself. No critics go with you. So no, but you're worth yourself. Right. You're your own evaluator of this event. And you don't have to literally go, but you need to do something that helps you step outside of your normal behavior that you can define as creative. Some people, it's interesting, in the first two or three chapters of the book, start cleaning closets and emptying out old clothes and visiting goodwill and rearranging their furniture, almost like a re-nesting process of out with the old, in with the new, in the most prophetic way. Yeah. And uh, you can't beat that it doesn't work. It works. It works. And so those, those are the two things that I continue, is the morning pages and the, the artist's date. So, if we were to, uh, I mean, there, there's going to be some folks out here that, upon watching this Tuesday at 7 interview, are going to say, I want to learn more about pouring. Hmm. Um, if they're not from north, if they're, if they're not from northeast Ohio and they can't wander into the Medina area, what's, what's a, a good way for them to pick up the basics? Or maybe to self teach? Well, or is it not possible? So? No, 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 it's definitely possible. Um, they couldn't view the 2,000, now 8,000 YouTubes, but um, when this is over on the Tuesday at 7, I will post my three favorite pourers because there's a million. And I just, truly, it's very popular around the world. And, well, anything's popular when you're focusing on it. Um, <clears throat> So I'll, I'll, I'll list those names and, and how to find them. To me, when I decided, okay, I'm not watching all these, don't have time, don't want to, I'm gonna focus on the three people who speak most simply, incredibly, on this topic. And that's how you can post those on the Tuesday at seven. Perfect. That's where I would start, because that's where I did start, and I wasted way too much time trying to find some order in the chaos of it all. I do not do YouTubes. I don't create my own. People have asked me. I'm like, oh, heck no. Come to one of my classes. I know this is not the web, but um, I, I've even tried to take the Artist Wave course remotely. Actually, it was with a woman from Australia. Uh, I found it unsatisfying because there was no personal human interaction. And it's the people who come to the group, as you know, Roger, who you either have the givers and you have the takers. And hopefully the balance in the class is a 50-50 deal because you will come away all better for the give and the take. If there was, I saw something today on, a, on Facebook and if I were to summarize in one big sentence about what the artist way is and what I believe in all the art and interactions that I do, this would be it. Do the things you used to talk about doing but never did. Know when to let go and know when to hold on tight. Stop rushing. Don't be intimidated to say it. Don't be so intimidated to not say it like it is. Stop apologizing all the time. Learn to say no so your less so your yeses have much more oomph. Spend time with friends who lift you up and cut loose from the ones who bring you down. Stop giving your power away. Be more concerned with being interested than being interesting. Be old enough to appreciate your freedom, but young enough to enjoy it. Every one of those words spoke to me. Every one of them. Well, this has been a phenomenal interview. 
for everybody who shares, you can have a piece, uh, an opportunity to win a piece of Deb's <laughs> artwork. Uh, next week we'll draw a piece here that has a kind of a wave feel. And the second piece here that uh, is for We Ohioans. Um, so we'll yeah, be drawing. I'm, I'm making an assumption that everybody would like an Ohio sign, but apparently people are from, somebody's from the Orient. Yeah, yeah. She might not like Ohio. Yeah, Carol's from uh, Singapore. <laughs> and so Carol tunes in all the time from Singapore. And we have some folks that tune in from Italy and Canada and some other countries as well. But for those who share it, we're going to be drawing some of. Uh, Deb's work. We didn't talk about alcohol ink. It's a whole nother subject and a whole nother bird. One of the pictures you put up on Tuesday at 7 was my conch shell. Oh, yeah. It did go at the auction for the price that was reasonable to me, so I didn't get to buy it back, which is what I do. But this is just a sample of alcohol ink, and it's vibrant pigment that is sitting in isopropyl alcohol. And uh, it's much less controllable than acrylic pouring. So I only do like this class two or three times a year, um, but there's a big following for alcohol ink because of its vibrancy. If folks want to connect with you, either they're local here and they want to venture into Medina, what, what's the best way to connect with you? Well, I'm on Facebook, Deb Cheryl or Deborah Cheryl, S-H-E-R-L, or you can hit my website, which is Deb Cheryl, S-H-E-R-L, at Deb Cheryl, S-H-E-R-L. Dot com. Everybody in the world has always misspelled my name. This has always been my name. It is my maiden name. My husband chose not to change his name. So he'll be him and I'll be me and everybody gets their father's name. That's how I do it. And um, I have a website that is uh, a fine arts uh, oriented website and I will be starting a blog. But if you give me 48 hours, I will have my formula up on that site as well. Deb Cheryl at DebCheryl.com. Well, thank you very much. Uh, any questions, Craig? Because I, I would imagine that people are probably just kind of sitting back and taking it in because it's a, it's a lot of information, and we thank you for sharing it. I would imagine that there's going to be there might be some questions about the artist way. Again, uh, the artist way. The Julia Cameron, Cameron is the author here. I think there's there's a couple of different editions. I've read this. I practiced morning pages. The artist date. I've had the opportunity to pour some paint with Deb, both alcohol and the acrylics. I love it. It's it. The chemistry of it is is Compelling. fascinating. It is. And uh, and we encourage you guys to give that a try as well. Again, for anybody who shares, we're going to be drawing next week. Thank you for spending the last hour with us. And uh, you guys have a great week, and we'll talk soon. All right. See ya.